Your doctor has determined that you should have lymph nodes removed from your neck. You might have recently had an ultrasound examination or a biopsy of a lymph node, which suggested that cancer from the tumor in the thyroid gland has spread to the lymph nodes. This video is designed to prepare you by defining the issues as well as the potential risks related to the surgery. After this video, your surgeon or an assistant will be happy to answer any additional questions you might have. You will also be asked to sign a consent form that gives your surgeon permission to perform the surgery. What is the lateral compartment of the neck? The neck is conveniently divided into different zones so that the location of a specific lymph node can be easily identified. This facilitates communication between physicians and helps them to plan surgical procedures. The different zones of the neck include the central compartment, also known as level six and seven, and involves the region on both sides of the trachea, as well as in front of the trachea and larynx. The lateral compartments of the neck are on both sides of the central compartment, and are divided into levels 2, 3, 4, and 5. The region known as level 1 is located below the chin, but is rarely affected by the spread of thyroid cancer to these lymph nodes. Your surgeon will define the extent of your particular lymph node removal surgery. Lateral compartment lymph node surgery may be performed at the time of the original thyroid operation, or at a later time if the lymph nodes are not thought to be affected until after the first surgery. The timing of surgery will determine the extent and location of the incision. Your surgeon will review the specifics of wound closure, wound care, and the placement of a drain following the surgery. In addition, the anticipated length of stay in the hospital will be reviewed. Even though lymph nodes appear to be normal on an ultrasound or a CT scan, over the years, it has become evident that microscopic disease might be present. Surgeons used to remove only lymph nodes that were enlarged, but patients often had recurrence of disease in the lymph nodes, which led to multiple operations. Now, most thyroid cancer experts remove all of the lymph nodes in a compartment known as a compartment-oriented lymph node dissection. How do you treat cancer when it has spread to the lateral compartment lymph nodes? Lymph nodes are identified by palpation, ultrasound, CT, or MRI prior to initial surgery. Diseased lymph nodes are removed surgically by a procedure known as a lymph node dissection. Options other than surgery, such as radioactive iodine, alcohol injections, external beam radiotherapy, and watchful waiting are not usually advisable. If lymph nodes appear in the lateral compartment after the initial treatment of the thyroid gland, the decision to operate is a bit more clouded. Information regarding the management of recurrent or persistent lymph nodes is covered in another video. In most instances, patients should undergo surgical removal of the lymph nodes. This is the most effective way to remove disease in the neck. Also, many patients will have radioactive iodine therapy after surgery. Radioactive iodine therapy will not be effective if there are still lymph nodes in the neck because the lymph nodes will soak up all of the iodine. The effect of other therapies such as radioactive iodine, external beam radiotherapy, and chemotherapy for metastatic lymph node disease is very limited, so these treatment alternatives are rarely used. Ultrasound guided, guided alcohol, alcohol injection, injection of small, small lymph, lymph nodes, nodes in the neck, neck is a relatively new technique that is being done by a limited number of centers. What are the risks associated with the removal of lymph nodes from this region? The removal of lymph nodes from the lateral compartments of the neck is a very routine procedure and is known as a selective lymph node dissection. The goal of the surgery is to remove all of the lymph nodes that appear to be at risk of having metastatic thyroid cancer while preserving all of the important structures in the neck so that they continue to function normally. There are important nerves, arteries, veins, and muscles in the neck that run through the region where the lymph nodes are located. The surgeon will do his or her best to preserve these structures during surgery. Here are the rare risks associated with the lateral compartment lymph node dissection. Bleeding. The risk of bleeding is small, but most likely to occur in the early period following the operation. If it occurs, the patient may need to return to the operating room. In select circumstances, a drain and a pressure dressing may be used instead. 
If there's a sudden onset of swelling after you've returned home, you should contact your surgeon and call 911. If you live very close to an emergency room and can be transported there quickly, then that may be a good option. You should not attempt to drive yourself to an emergency room, but rather be driven there by a friend or family member while at the same time notifying your surgeon of the change in your condition. To avoid postoperative bleeding, avoid any activity that involves exertion. Your surgeon will advise you not to do any exercise or lifting of any object over 10 pounds for at least a week following surgery. Your surgeon may also elect to place you on a stool softener after surgery in order to avoid straining during a bowel movement. A second complication is nerve injury. There are a number of important nerves that run through the neck. Fortunately, a selective lymph node dissection is a fairly routine and commonly performed procedure, and in experienced hands, the risk of injury to these nerves is very small. If injury to the nerves occurs, it is usually temporary and recovers over the period of weeks to months. These are the major motor nerves that are at risk during a lateral compartment lymph node dissection. The vagus nerve, which gives off the branch that controls the movement of the vocal cord, known as the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Injury to that nerve would lead to vocal cord paralysis and hoarseness. The hypoglossal nerve that controls the motor function of that side of the tongue. Injury may lead to slurring of speech and problems with swallowing. The spinal accessory nerve, which controls the motor function of the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles. Injury to that nerve is usually temporary and leads to difficulty elevating the arm above the horizontal. It can also lead to a downward and forward rotation of the shoulder, referred to as the shoulder syndrome, which can be painful. The phrenic nerve, which controls the motor activity of the diaphragm, the large breathing muscle in the abdomen. In most individuals, paralysis of half of the diaphragm is well tolerated due to the fact that there are numerous other muscles that play a role in the breathing process. The cervical sympathetic chain, which controls various muscles that control the size of the pupil and the function of the upper eyelid. Injury to this nerve, which runs immediately behind the carotid artery, is very uncommon. But if it should occur, the development of a Horner syndrome results. This syndrome is defined as the development of a constricted or small pupil and a lowering of the normal resting position of the upper eyelid. In addition, patients may experience a decrease in the moisture of the eye through a decrease in the flow of tears. It should be noted that patients who develop a Horner syndrome do not usually experience any change in their normal vision. Sensory nerves of the cervical plexus, which control the normal level of sensation in the skin of the neck, as well as sensation of the external ear, as well as the region below the level of the collarbone. Injury to these sensory nerves leads to numbness over this region, which does not produce a significant functional problem and often recovers, at least in part, over a period of several months after surgery. The brachial plexus is a very large series of nerves located in the lower neck that control the motor function of the arm. These nerves are very large and are rarely injured during a routine lymph node dissection. The nerves on the side of the neck being operated on are the only nerves at risk during surgery. Another rare risk of surgery is stroke. This complication is extremely uncommon and usually occurs only in patients who have significant atherosclerotic plaque in their carotid artery. This is usually found in older individuals. Your surgeon will take every precaution in handling your carotid artery, which will greatly minimize this extremely uncommon complication. A final risk is a chyle fistula. Chyle is a type of fluid that runs through the lymphatic vessels that travel from the gastrointestinal tract up to the neck and enter the bloodstream, usually on the lower left side of the neck. If these very small lymphatic vessels are interrupted, there can be a leak of this fluid under the skin. This usually is recognized during the procedure and corrected before the end of the operation. However, in very unusual circumstances, the leak may not be recognized immediately or the repair may not hold up. If there is a collection of chyle after surgery, this usually can be managed by placing a drain in the neck and by altering your diet to a low-fat diet. Under select circumstances, if the leak persists or is considered a high-volume leak, then it may be necessary to perform an additional operation to close the tiny duct. 
Your surgeon will review the length of the anticipated hospital stay, as well as the details on how to manage the drain. Your surgeon will prescribe medication to reduce stiffness and discomfort after your surgery. He or she will also tell you when you can resume normal activities and return to work. Is there a chance that there are still lymph nodes present in your neck that may become enlarged and require removal at a later date? While comprehensive, this surgery cannot remove every single lymph node from the neck. There is a risk that very small lymph nodes may remain in the neck and harbor microscopic disease. These nodes could grow to a detectable size at a later date. If that occurs, your doctor may choose to observe those lymph nodes or alternatively advise that further surgery be performed. In experienced hands, the risk of recurrent lymph nodes in the lateral compartment of your neck following a comprehensive lymph node dissection is quite small. Routine surveillance with ultrasound, physical exam, and measuring thyroglobulin, the thyroid cancer biomarker, will help monitor the remaining lymph nodes in the neck. Your surgeon or clinical assistant will be happy to answer any additional questions you may have regarding your planned procedure.